first and 15. Now a handoff to Ingram. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. That's it for the first half. All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Bills now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, screaming, people upset. But typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case, are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. Second down, Bridgewater. And he's got his man, the tight end, McDonald. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 12 yards that time and a Bills first down. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the ball, as we just saw there. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. He's going to walk one deep left side here. And is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Earl Thomas. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And the ledger for them so far looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> Not sure it can be much better than that. They've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game. Stop, stop! By 90! By 20! By 20! They'll begin the drive with Howard. And he's going to be taken down shy of the 10 right around the 9-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Again, it's Howard. And a short pickup here as he'll get across the 10 to the 11-yard line. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here's Vic. And some room to maneuver. A good decision in the end to pull it and run. Get some nine yards and a first. How many times do we hear that third down may be the most important down in football? And there's no better example than what we just saw right there. Forced to scramble. Knows where the first down marker is. Dies for it and gets it. What a big-time play, putting his body on the line to pick up a key first down. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen... Back now in Buffalo. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. They'll try to throw it here. Vic flushed out right. 
And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. Well, the pressure just couldn't get to him that time. They forced him out to his right, but he held his poise, surveyed the field, didn't find anything he liked, and then took off and picked up a nice game. The offense on third down, a perfect four for four thus far. This will be third and six. Vic now. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. Bruce Smith able to drop him for a loss of two, and that'll bring up fourth down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys that they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's really a difficult task. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On second down, it's McCoy. Not a whole lot of room to run. Gets it to the 35 after showcasing the great move. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves them needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. On play action, it's Bridgewater. Turn will be stopped at the 34-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. The Madden Elites heading back onto the field. They have the big cushion here in the final stages of this one. I don't know if there's any better feeling than being up big on the road. There really can't be because for a team to go on the road and win in the NFL, that's huge to begin with. But just think about all the preparation that went into it. When they first started talking about this game, leading up to it during the week, going on the road, unfamiliar city, obviously, unfamiliar hotel, no one's going to be with you once you get to the stadium. They're all going to be against you. You name it, all those things they had to deal with, they were able to conquer them and do it convincingly. Yeah, they did it very convincingly. And now the final moments of this one. On the move to his left. They find some open field here. And down inside the 15 he goes. I guess no need to force it when you can do that instead. First down, 18-yard gain. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. Now a handoff. It's Freeman. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stopped that one for a short gain. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and it'll be third down. On third down, Vic rolling to his left. And put it on the board. It's six, a touchdown. As his guys are in for six. And the Madden Elites, they extend their lead.
Well, I've got to laugh here, and I really don't want to because the old school in me is not happy about this score this late, not necessary. But this is Madden, isn't it? Yeah. This is how this is how it works. Rub it in. Have a day. I mean, what, what does it matter? <laughs> These guys who are playing in this game, there are no feelings exactly. there. They don't have to face the guy. Well, they might if they're in the same room going head to head. But, <laughs> but that's the virtual it. guys on the screen don't have to face each other after this one. In that case, run it up. Gold with the extra point, and that makes the score 28 to nothing. The storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is, and what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team, there's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them? going along with those zeros in the time column too that'll do it for us for charles davis and all our crew i'm brandon gone this has been madden ultimate team on ea sports join the discussion on twitter at ea sports underscore m u t with that we say so long from buffalo It's time to punch one of two tickets to the Super Bowl. It's the coach, and this is the Madden Ultimate Team Playoffs. Straight ahead, we've got a good one in store between the Portland Snowhawks and the Madden Elites. So with that, let's get out to the East Bay in Oakland, California. On the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. to about the 35. 10 yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Now Wilson on first down. And Cooks hands it over the middle. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Brent, I think we can see early on they're making a concerted effort to get him the football. So to me, that means they like the matchup that they have. They feel like he's better than the guys that are covering him. Two plays, two passes. We'll see if they go back to that well. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Tackle made there by Zach Brown. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. 
I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over the top. Get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Wilson now to throw on third down. Throw right side is held in by the tight end Gonzalez. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. It's his first catch, and it'll be good for 15 at a first down. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big-time pickup for them, and now... I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. Here we go with Jamal Charles. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script. You go through your play calling. You go through all the stuff and establish things. And it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. This will be their first trip to the red zone. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. They go read option with Wilson. And they go the wrong way on this one. Losing yardage back at the 12. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know. The Thunders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Portland in control of the football here to begin quarter number two. They're on the march, but facing a third down here. From the gun, it's Wilson. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. And when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through it. So still no touchdowns in the first half, but we do have some action on the scoreboard with the field goal. So maybe now the mentality changes in this game because anytime you get to the red zone and if you don't come away with six points, you feel like it's a disappointment. In a game like this one, being able to kick field goals means you're right there and then you're just looking for that big break to take you over the top. transformation throughout his career from Atlanta where he would take off and go at just about the drop of a hat and turn defenses into mush and then by the end of his career in Philadelphia we completed pass like we just saw from the pocket yet still had those great legs when necessary to help get him out of trouble gold able to tack on the extra point and that makes it a 7-3 lead that's fielded in the end zone and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And we focus on the Madden Elite's defense as they come back on the field. And we're going to get a peek at some of the hits that have helped them get this first-half lead. And you know how the best hits happen? 
by being really good on that side of the ball in terms of fundamentals, being in the right spot, diagnosing plays well, and being there at the point of attack. They are really making it happen. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. When Tony Gonzalez makes catches, sometimes I feel bad, like it's almost routine. And that's really not what the deal is. This is a guy who has to work his way open on every play because he's such a featured guy. But he's also a guy that throughout his career, there's a little bit of a loyalty and a soft spot All -star for Kansas City, offense. his first team. When he went to Atlanta, did you know he kept his mouthpiece from Kansas City, which was kind of that yellow that goes in the Kansas City uniform? Mm -hmm. Not in the Atlanta uniform, but he kept wearing it because he remembered the good times he had in KC. On second down, here's Wilson. And his pass incomplete. Everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs. You can't just be a guy who can run the football. You have to be able to catch it as well. And he didn't get that done on that play. From the gun on third down, Wilson. And that is incomplete. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there and gets the good defensive position, able to affect the play. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Oakland after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Vic operating on first down. And this is incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. I 20, I 90, four, four. A second down throw for Vic. Going deep downfield for Ross. That's caught inside the 20. And a huge play that time. 51 yards. That's a big time pitch and catch right there. Partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one-on-one -on -one and the ball's in the air like that. This will be their first trip to the red zone. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. They'll run it now out of the gun. He will push his way down to about the 14. J.J. Watt the one that gets him down. J.J. Watt makes another tackle there, and, and it's for a minimal gain. And let's face it, if that's all you're going to get running the ball, you are not got much success against him and his team. Or, yeah, you better find a way to go around J.J. Watt, which isn't easy to do. It's really not, because you got to try everything. Can you go around him? Can you go by him? He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Enough takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Third and long for Vic. And this is going to be incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. 
And here now the offense heading back out there. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. So two quarters down, two remain. Charles and I return after the break. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL and give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, getting set for quarter number three here. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one taken just inside the 10. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes Michael Vick now leading his offense back out there. How do you break down his game so far? Just the one touchdown pass, but sometimes the touchdown pass stat category, that doesn't tell the whole story. It really doesn't, not until you balance it with the error side, you know? And in this case, he hasn't thrown any interceptions. So a lot of people would call this almost a pedestrian game, kind of a bus driver game. But that's just really wrong. Being a bus driver is a good thing if you're running a football team because that means you're in control and you're taking your team to the right places. Yeah, he's been pretty solid. Now a second down throw for Vic. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Desmond Bryan coming up the middle, gets him there for a loss of about nine. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop something big to knock them back on their heels? Vic readies to throw. Going deep downfield for Ross. And that's caught inside the 30. And he will have a touchdown. Touchdown. And the Madden Elites, they extend their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Now Gold for the extra point. Gold with the extra point, and the lead is now 17-3. So the drive there, they went 80 yards in three plays. Gold now out to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Yeah. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in 
in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Well, the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Give them five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Now Wilson. And he fires one that's intercepted. It's the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really competent throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Offense trotting out again. This is sort of what you would call the put away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown, it's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Now the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. He may try and run for this. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. He's starting to fall into the category. not fair because when he's on target throwing the ball he's dangerous but when you add in his ability to make plays with his feet <laughs> almost impossible yeah exactly they've had trouble stopping him in the secondary this time they've got the great coverage oh he can run too a handoff Devontae Freeman and able to push his way forward here for a good little game five yards is the tally on first down that brings up second and five tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing, but with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They'll say no gain on the play there, now it'll be third down. As we are just about set to go here in quarter number four. And this offense on third down today, they've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Here's Michael Vick. Being chased out left. He can run for it, and he will. And this results in six. Touchdown. Michael Vick, an 18-yard touchdown run. And the Madden Elites, they extend their lead. Well, partner, when you get a team full of elite players, the Madden Elites, you'd expect them to jump on them just like we're seeing. And the guys on the other side, yes, they're NFL players too, and there's some good players over there, so don't get us wrong. But... They're called elites for a reason. Yeah, you're exactly right about that. I think they came into this game with hope. That hope gets snuffed out pretty quickly. Gold able to tack on the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. A drive that time of six plays. And a nice play on the end of it. An 18-yard touchdown run.
gold now out to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden in the second day. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And Wilson's gonna go down. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback. Almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Throw left side complete. It's Cole. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. Wilson now five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Wilson. Throw complete right side to Cooks. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Looking for Cooks, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jalen Ramsey. Oh, able to avoid him. And he's able to get it back to the 41-yard line. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt and in a big way. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10. Despite the late lead, Vic's going to throw, eluding the pressure right. He finds Ross, right side, it's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 12 yards on that one, it earns him a fresh set of downs. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? Atlanta had the lead against New England, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. It won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. They're going to hurry back to the line now. on second down. He's going to wind up and air it out. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. And what a big-time play there. 44 yards. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. On first and goal, Howard. And this will be a touchdown. Jordan Howard taking it in from four yards out. And the Madden Elites, they extend their lead. That's how you, Charles. 
You play to the final whistle, I get that, but there are a few folks that might not be too happy with that score late in the game with it already well in hand. You seem a little squeamish about that last I, score. I struggle with it. <laughs> I struggle. But on the other, the, the argument, I get it, on the other side is, hey, do something about it. Stop them. I guarantee you, I know who was really excited. Fantasy owners yeah. who had them. Hey, listen, get the points for me. They're not worried about hurt feelings or anything like that. That's just new age stuff. Gold with the extra point, and that'll increase their lead to 28. Gold now out to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now back out comes the offense. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that, and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team, and we were losing late in a game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked up by Jamin Ramsey. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. Oh, it's on. By 90, by 20. Alpha, alpha. Now well, they're going to throw it here with Vic. Going deep downfield for Ross. And this is caught inside the five. And he will score. It's a touchdown. A big play there. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And that interception key as it leads to the touchdown. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership <laughs> that as he tries to negotiate a new contract <laughs> off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Gold to add the extra point. Gold able to tack on the extra point, and the lead will swell by one more. Gold now out to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. Pressure. And that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward. And that time, they were able to get in there and influence the throw. And remember, quarterbacks got to get rid of it. They don't have the tough rule that they can fall back on anymore. He's going to let it fly. And that one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football here. Nearly a fourth pick. And it's third down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And that is incomplete. Well, as always, partner, an extreme pleasure to share a booth with you. I, I have to say, I am impressed at your discipline because you came here and you said you were not going to eat any of the media buffet. <laughs> you made it to the end. You didn't consume a single calorie. I appreciate that. What you missed is me going to the concession stand outside of your <laughs> eyesight and getting it you done cheated. that way. Look, I mean, they were serving the good stuff. I had to do it. Oh, man, but you're, you're svelte in good shape, but yeah, you cheated a little bit. We'll let it slide. I appreciate that. Always a pleasure to work with you. So that'll do it for Charles Davis, the rest of our crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of Madden Ultimate Team on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Oakland, we sign off. So long, everybody.